Good morning. I'm Linda with Pinky Mouse Sisters in the Kitchen. Uh, Mary's at home today. Um, I think we told y'all um, several weeks ago that we were going to be cooking, um, doing some extra uh, recipes and videos for um, uh, through the end of the year. So we're going to continue that through the month of December. Um, so the weather is supposed to be really bad tomorrow. So I'm probably going to cook by myself tomorrow and then um, I'll be at Mary's on Wednesday, uh, Lord willing, and the, and the weather's okay. So thank you all and welcome to, um, uh, to our kitchen. And uh, of course, I miss my sister today, but um, I'm going to be making Texas peanut patties. And I'm going to get right over to the stove, but I want to uh, show you first. Um, I've got these little mini pie tins. And I just lightly butter the bottom and the sides of them. You can order these on Amazon. They're really cheap. You can get like a hundred for just a few dollars. So, and they're reusable. Um, so I'm just going to butter these um, last three here. Just, um, you just see that I'm just getting a swirl in the bottom and on the sides. And then I'm just going to put this aside. There's more than one size of these pans. These are shallow, and these are really uh, great for the peanut patties. Uh, you can also get the bigger ones here, and these are probably, they're deeper, and these are probably more for like a little individual, I don't know, meatloaf, pot pie, wouldn't be very big, but it would be like, because it's a little bit deeper than these that are shallow. And I love these here for the peanut patties. Now, you don't have to use the pie tins. You can butter aluminum foil and just pour your um, uh, peanut patty candy out on that, break it up. They, that's how Aunt Faye made it all my life. She just broke it up into pieces. Um, you could do put foil, butter foil on a cookie sheet, a baking sheet. Um, if you have granite counters, you could do it on that um, or just whatever you're you know, whatever you have at your house, you can do it. If you don't have the little pans, you don't want to use them. Now, in Texas, in all convenience stores, and I'm going to move over to the stove because I want to um, get my boiler on here and get it hot. But in Texas, um, and I guess I should say East Texas, you don't go in a convenience store that you don't see these red peanut patties on usually up at the checkout. And I'm using my Sam's boilers today. These are a little bit bigger. Let's see, how big are they? They're two and a half quart, I believe. Um, they're a little bit bigger than the, t the two quart boilers. So I use them when I'm making candy or something like this, like I did the other day. I've got two here because I'm going to put on one batch and then I'm going to put on another batch. Now, this candy will keep for, you can make it now for Christmas. It will keep. And what I was saying is when you go in a convenience store in Texas, you go to check out at the cash register, nine times out of ten, you're going to see a box of, of peanut patties. They may come from different candy stores. Tyler's got a candy store. Lufkin's got a candy store. I think it's Tyler Candy Company and Atkinson's, or Atkinson's and uh, Lufkin has been there all my life or as long as I can remember. But these are really easy to make. It's just like anything else that you're making. Um, you just have to. And Okay, tell me if that volume is better. Is the volume better now? I had it turned up, and for some reason, maybe when I put it on this stand, it turned it back down. But can y'all hear me better now? Would y'all please let me know? Okay. So, um, I'm heating my boiler. I'm really big on preheating boilers. So, um, I'm going to heat this. And by the way, for our members, uh, this is, um, I believe, um, little Linda got this on her website. So, for our members, it is on there. But I'm using two-thirds uh, cup of light Cairo, white cor light corn syrup, whatever brand you're using. And you're going to hear this sizzle because my boiler is hot little sizzle anyway and again I didn't butter that because we don't put the butter in until the end so I'm just going to try to get as much of this out as I can you are going to need a candy thermometer with this so 
peanut patties and moon pies and RC colas and Pepsi colas and things like that are something that's pretty, um, pretty much part of Texas, especially East Texas. So I've got my syrup in there. You can tell my boiler's hot, so it's already starting to melt. You want four tables. That was three, um, not three, um, two-thirds cup of syrup, and I'm using four tablespoons of water. I'm going to add that in there. And two cups of imperial granulated sugar, and I'm going to pour that in there. And then we're going to do a fourth a teaspoon of salt because the peanuts are raw and they're not salted, they're not roasted, so we're adding some salt to it. Okay, so I'm going to just stir this up and get it started cooking. Now, it does not take long at all to cook this. Um, what, it, what takes about 20 minutes is when you're stirring it after it's cooked. You can see that it's I'm stirring it, so it'll be... Um, so it'll start cooking. And I'm going to go ahead and put the peanuts in. Now, this is different from peanut brittle. I'm going ahead and putting the peanuts in. And this is a little over two cups. On the recipe, I have two cups. But um, I'm always generous with my nuts. So I put a little bit more than it calls for. And you're going to see that this is pretty thick. Now, for those of you who have never had a peanut patty, um, the difference in peanut patties and peanut brittle is these are soft. They're sugary and they're soft. Uh, peanut brittle is crisp and it has bacon soda in it. Peanut patties do not have bacon soda in it. So, um, that was um, a fourth teaspoon of salt. So, um, that's the difference in this, and you'll see it when, when it starts cooking. So, I'm going to use a candy thermometer, and um, I'll wait until it starts, starts cooking a little bit. You want to you wanna kind of get it going before you put your candy thermometer in it. And then I've got my vanilla, and I've got, um, I've got butter. This is a teaspoon of vanilla. And I've got four tablespoons of real butter, and this is salted. And I've got one teaspoon of red food coloring. And if y'all think that I don't bake a lot and don't make a lot of candy, this is, this is a quart of red food coloring. I've got another one of these in my cabinet. I used to... When I was making candy, I'd use this a lot. Of course, you use it in red velvet cakes, too. But um, you can buy the little bottles in the store with the where the vanilla and the extracts are. But I got this. Um, I ordered this online. And uh, so, anyway, I just wanted to get that out and show you all my big bottle. So, I'm going to get this cooking. And then I'm going to uh, start the other one. So, what I usually do after this comes to temperature... I, well, I'll show y'all what I do, but um, I, I won't take the steps until I get ready to do it. I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'm putting two-thirds a cup of um, light corn syrup. This is a store brand. Um, I have several bottles of K-Ro, but you can tell that this um, this um, um Kroger's brand, it's good, it's good. It's off-brand, but it's it's store-brand, but it's still good syrup. So, um, and you can tell it's pretty thick. Now, there's some store brands, you can turn the bottle upside down, and you can tell that it is super thin. I don't buy that kind. And I, I guess I, I can't even tell you a brand now, but there are certain store brands that are not as good. They're, it's like they're watered down. So uh, this is going to start, going to start cooking in just a little bit. And uh, this is kind of like any other candy that you make that needs to set. Um, and I'm not going to tell y'all that I've never made this, that I have not made this on a rainy day and that I haven't made peanut brittle and divinity on rainy days. I have. 
but I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't suggest it because you know different humidities um, it definitely does play a toll in um, in your candy setting and if you're not um, real familiar with candy making I probably would suggest that you make it on a nice pretty day it is a gorgeous day here it's in the 30s this morning it was really cold um, and I'm not a cold natured person but it seemed like there was a chill in the house and I looked at the thermostat it was 68 degrees but it just felt it felt pretty cool to me but it's going to warm up to be a really nice day and uh, I hope that all y'all had a a really nice Thanksgiving. It was real quiet here. Okay, you you can see this, that the syrup has started to thin out. And this will start cooking in a little bit. Um, it won't take it long to cook. I don't have it on, I've only got it on medium because I don't want it to start boiling until I get, you know, till I can tell that there's, there's no, actually the sugar's already dissolved. So, I'll let this start cooking. Okay, I'm just going to leave that in here a second, and I'm going to get, um, I'm going to get, I've already got my peanuts over here for my other batch. I've got most of my stuff over here. I've got my butter, my water, my vanilla, and my, food coloring, I'll have to get salt and I have to get sugar over there and I've just poured up the syrup. So, um, I will move that over there when I get started with this one. But I want y'all to see how this is cooking. Let me move. What did I do with my little... Oh, there it is. And we've, um, I've noticed several comments about People were asking about a fruit cake, and uh, Mary Mary's watching, and she might have seen this too. But um, I don't make a fruit cake, and it's not that I couldn't. Um, I just um, I just am not a big fan of uh, fruit cake. And Susan, uh, one of our good friends, and uh, somebody that's followed us for a long time, um, her mother passed away. Uh, just a, just a few days ago, and we have been remembering her in prayer. And y'all, please remember Susan. She's such a sweet person, such a giver and hard worker. And her mo her mother, though I didn't know her, she was a beautiful person. So we want to remember Susan. And also, Susan has been sick too, really sick over the weekend. So we want to remember Susan and her dad and her family. Okay. So when you're thinking about making a bunch of different kinds of cookies and candy for Christmas and you want to, you can't make them all the same week. You can't make them all the same day. So you want to get your list of what you're going to make. And Mary and I usually, we usually lengthen ours several times and that's probably not a good thing to do, but we usually wind up doing it. We say we're only going to do this and then we wind up doing a whole lot more. But um, make your list, check your pantry. Okay, I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and turn this up to five. And once it starts boiling, I'm going to put the thermometer in it. Make your list and check your pantry to see what you need. Check to see if things are out of date. Um, if spices have been in your pantry and they are out of date, um, and I'm not going to tell you I hadn't used out-of-date spices because I have, and I imagine every one of y'all have. But if it's something that you really want it to really have that good flavor to it, and you buy a spice in the in the fall and during the holiday season, uh, put it in a Ziploc bag and put it in your freezer, and that's going to keep it fresh. It's just like nuts, um, uh, peanuts, pecans, almonds, walnuts. Um, if you get an over to, overabundance in the fall, and you don't use it all, make sure they're bagged up real good, no air in the bags, and put them in your freezer, and then you can take them out and use them during the year as you want to. But make a list of what you want to make, and then look at each item and see if you've made it before, then you know how long it stays fresh. If you haven't made it before, um, try to find out from where you got the recipe 
Does, is this a cookie that stays fresh and that doesn't dry out? Now, I have got, okay, y'all can see that we've started, that it started boiling here. It's boiling on one side. Once it starts boiling all over, I'm going to put the thermometer in it. Um, I've got three cookie recipes that you could make today, and they'll still be good in March. They're, they're, those kind of cookies are the ones you want to make first. The number one, of course, is short, Scottish shortbread. Scottish shortbread will stay fresh for several months because it's just got so much butter in it. It will stay really good. And I'm not telling you something that I haven't tried. I know it will stay fresh. Um, okay, we're boiling really good here. So I'm fixing to put the thermometer in there. And we're going to let this cook to right around... 200 and um, we don't want it to go past 250. I think on the recipe I've got 248. Make sure that's not in the bottom. Again, you do not want your thermometer touching the bottom of your boiler or pot. Make sure it does not touch the bottom. So Scottish shortbread, you can make ahead. Um, make sure you keep it in a good airtight container. Uh, we have a lot of big um, Tupperware or Rubbermaid bowls that you can keep it in. You can put it in Ziploc bags um, and keep it in that. Um, put it somewhere where, you know, it's out of the way where it's not going to get broke. Uh, pecan sandies is something that you can make. You can make two or three months ahead of time. They're just going to keep getting better every time. Every day they set, they're going to keep getting better. Okay, now that's boiling, so I'm going to turn it back down to um, medium. Whoa, that's hot. That syrup is hot, hot. I'm going to have to watch this real close, make sure I don't let it go past 250. And the third cookie that I make that stays fresh for a very long time is um, are my ginger cookies. Now, this is not gingerbread. It's a ginger cookie. So those three things, you could start, you could make them anytime and put them up for Christmas. Now, if you're, if you want to make, like I've got several other cookies that I like to make, uh, ribbon cookies um, are really delicious and they, um, they will stay fresh probably for a couple of weeks, but I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't in, in, uh, expect them to stay fresh like a month or five weeks or six weeks and they have chopped candy cherries in them and chocolate and uh and uh, chopped toasted almonds they are delicious and i make those and then um uh, we're getting really really close this goes really fast so you gotta watch this once it starts i'm gonna put my second boiler over here and get this started It's right at 2:48 now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wait just a minute. Um, need to get my sugar. Okay, y'all bear with me just a second here because I'm gonna start this other other boiler. And then I'm going to, that's about 249. Get my salt in here. Almost, just almost to 250.
So the other cookies that you make that uh, might not stay as late, uh, stay fresh as long, the, um, there's another one that I make, the orange date nut cookies. Okay, so this is at 250 degrees. The first thing I'm going to put in here is my butter. That's about four tablespoons. This makes it really delicious. This is salted butter. It's going to make it real creamy. And I'm going to put my vanilla in there. See how creamy that's looking? I'm just going to make sure the butter is all melted. And then I'm going to add rug is in my way. Then I'm going to add the uh, red food coloring. That's not quite melted yet. So I'm going to add that. Just keep stirring. I'm sorry. I'm going to keep stirring until that butter is completely melted. Okay. All right. Got it melted. Now word to the wise. This stains and if you get it on you, it's going to take a minute to get it off. If you get it on your counter, it's going to need a Brillo pad or something depending on what kind of counters you have. But this is the red food coloring. I'm going to pour it in there, and I want to make sure that I get it all in there. And if y'all are wondering if you have to put the red food coloring in it, the answer is no, you do not. But for it to look like our Texas peanut patties, it needs to be in there. It just makes it a real pretty red. And if y'all have seen these, for, um, for my Texas friends that have seen these, um, in the stores, if you see some that are, they're like a dull color and they're not, um, I'm going to take this off the fire and I'm going to set it over here and I'm going to let it set and I'm going to stir it. I'm going to move, move my boiler over here. I'm going to stir it every three or four minutes. I'm going to stir it. This has to set and stir for 20 minutes. That's where your time comes in it. So I'm going to set the clock. Um, for 20, 20 minutes or so. So the orange date nut cookies have um, chopped dates in them. I love dates. And it has uh, some orange zest, and they're really, really a delicious cookie. Those I don't make right away. I make sure that I've got... Um, um, you can do it two ways. You can make your cookie dough up, and I'm going to be doing some of that. Uh, you can make your cookie uh, dough up and put it, wrap it real good, put it in the freezer, fix you a little baggie, and put the temp and how long you bake it and, and put it in with the frozen cookie dough or in with the cookie dough that you're going to freeze. That way, when you come back to take your cookies out, you don't have to, to get your recipe books back out again. I, trust me, I've done it. And then have to go through and find the recipe You've got the information there. So I'm going to put my peanuts in here. I guess I need to turn that burner back on. I didn't even have the burner on. Um, so it, oh, and I need to get my other stuff over here too. So it makes a difference um, when you're taking out cookies to bake. Now, one reason that I like to do this is... Um, making my cookie dough up and putting it in the freezer. You can shape it round. You can shape it on a round log. You can shape it square. Um, I would advise you to shape it before you freeze it because if you don't, it's going to be, you're going to have to thaw it out. If you know the little, um, oh goodness, I don't even know what brands they are because I, I hadn't bought any. I, don't, I hadn't bought any in probably decades, but they have the rolls, the cookie rolls that you can buy in the store and just slice and bake. Well, this is kind of the same concept. So if you have them frozen in like, um, like maybe six or eight inch logs, and the reason I'm saying that is when you go to a an event, maybe your kid comes in, and tells you they need some cookies the next day, and I don't even know if schools still do this or not. But then you can take out some cookie dough that afternoon, let it thaw out real quick, and then slice them and bake them, and they're fresh. 
You don't have to cook them all at the same time. If you're doing a cookie swap, you can take out just what you need of that particular one. So when you're freezing them, if you're going to do this, freeze them in about, about an 8 or 10 inch log. And that way you can cut them out and slice or slice them and bake them. And you, you've got like three or four more rolls of the refrigerator or in the freezer that you can take out and cook for your Christmas party. So, um, I really like that idea. I started doing it years ago um, when Mama was here with me and we would cook on Thanksgiving Day after we ate. We would, well, not cook, but we'd get in the kitchen and we would start, um, we would start making our cookie dough. So, if you'll see me, I'm just going to, I'm going to stir this. I'm just going to stir it real good. Two or three times. Now, when you first start, when you first start stirring this, you're going to notice that it's real thin and it's real shiny. It's very shiny. So, the longer you stir this and the longer it sits, it's going to, um, it's going to start dulling, uh, taking the shine off, and it's going to start getting thicker. So, I'm going to move this over here. So I have this here when I need this. Put some of this in my dish water. So you ever wonder how these people can just do so many things and have so much stuff, so many different kinds of goodies ready for Christmas? Um, have a tray of beautiful home-baked cookies and you like, how much time did they spend doing that? You're still going to spend the time making the cookie dough up, but it's going to save you time when you start, when you start getting them out to, uh, to bake. And if y'all, your bakers out there, y'all know what I'm talking about. Cookie baking is a very long process. So, you know, you've got to make the dough up. Some recipes ask you to chill it. You've got to chill it. Then you've got to bake it. Then you've got to clean up your kitchen. So it's just, um, um, it just makes sense to do some of this ahead of time. And that way, I mean, when I was baking for the public, I would have people, I had one lady call me one time. Um, it, she was at the post office and she's like, I will pay extra if you will get me, like however many it was, six dozen cookies and take to this place that she wanted to take them to. And I'm like, I am swamped. She said, what you name your price, just please do this for me. And I said, I am not going to charge you any more than I normally charge you. And I got in my kitchen and I made her cookies. But if you have some, that some dough that's already made up, um, it really comes in handy on spur of the minute, minute um, uh, times, maybe unexpected company, maybe somebody comes in and um, you... You don't have anything for dessert. Well, take a roll of cookies out of the freezer, let them thaw out for a few minutes, and, and slice them and bake them, and you can serve them with ice cream, warm with ice cream. You can uh, make a cookie sandwich out of them, or just serve them plain as just a plain cookie. Um, there's nothing better than a warm cookie. Uh, Double Tree, which is part of the Hilton chain, it's one of the hotels that I used to love to stay at. When you check in, and those of you who have traveled or maybe have stayed at Hilton Properties, y'all know what I'm talking about. When you checked in, they would give you a warm chocolate chip cookie. And those cookies were so good. It was just, it was just a treat to get that warm cookie. It's like, you know, a taste of home or something. And they were good cookies. Um, I'm sure that they were made, you know, in a somewhere and they just heated them up but they it sure was a nice treat to get when you were checking in your hotel and you've been traveling for several hours to get that nice warm chocolate chip cookie okay so i'm just gonna keep on stirring now i used to be really really particular about this and i would stir every minute but um and i may even have that on the directions but i don't stir every minute but I do, when I stir, I stir it for several seconds and then, you know, let it set and stir it again. The most important thing is you've got to let it set. When I, the first time I made these, you got to watch this. 
The first time I made these, um, I don't know, several years ago when I started uh, selling and baking and selling for the public, um, I, it, the recipe, the original recipe that I got said to put it in ice water, to set your pot in ice water. Some of y'all may have heard that. So I did. I would I would run uh, some water in the sink, and then I would fill it up with ice, and then I would set my boiler over there. And for some reason, it was just, first of all, when you put a hot boiler in a, in a tub of ice, it's going to melt the ice really quick. And it just, for some reason, I just didn't like that procedure. So I figured out, after several trial and errors, that... Um, the best way that I could do it was to do it like this. And you know, we tell y'all all the time, people do things different. That doesn't mean it's right or wrong. I show you how I like to do it. And I think that's probably maybe the fun of seeing how different people do things. But um, I'm, not, I'm not a master of things like some people are. Uh, so, I figure out a way that works for me, just like the fried pies. You know, my mother and my sister could roll them so thin you could almost see through the dough. I could never figure out how to do that. As much as I tried, I just could not get it to work for me. So, I started rolling out individual balls, and that worked for me. So, that's the same thing with this. This works for me. The ice didn't, but um, you definitely do need a candy thermometer with this, too. So, uh, let's see, some of the other cookies um, that, um, that I love to make at Christmas time. You can tell it's starting to thicken up. It's, it's not, not even close to being there, but it's starting to thicken up. And you may think it's not going to thicken up, but it will. It'll thicken up. So um, there's a um, cookie recipe that I love, and they're called sugar crinkles. And they're um, if y'all have seen chocolate cookies uh, with, um, I think most people dust powdered sugar on the top, but the top of them crackles, and they kind of it, it kind of looks like it's I don't know what how to explain it like maybe like co uh, cracked concrete or something. Well, the sugar crinkle is kind of um, it's it doesn't have the crackles on the top. You dip the balls and sugar, just the tops of them usually is what I do. And they're very, very delicate. Um, and they do dry out, but they will literally melt in your mouth. They are so delicious. So those are a cookie that I really love to make and probably will be making some of those. It's not a, it's not a hard recipe at all. It's a very easy recipe. But you just want to either make the cookie dough ahead and freeze it or make them at the last minute. I wouldn't keep those over probably three or four days, five at the tops, because they will dry out. And then another favorite cookie of mine that I make is Scandinavian, Scandinavian almond bars. And those you can make probably, I'd say a week to two weeks ahead of time. And those are um, one of my nieces, Misty, and her mom, Debbie Edwards' wife. Those are their favorite cookies. Every year, they always look forward to them. And they're made and uh, pressed out in kind of like, maybe like, not a log, but I try to make them about maybe four or five inches wide. And and then you cut them at a diagonal, diagonal and they have almonds, and you, you drizzle like this... Um, like an icing on top of them, and they are absolutely delicious. They are so good. So those are my favorite cookies to make. See it start getting thick. You just keep stirring. Now when I get these done and they set, they're completely cool then I'm gonna wrap each one individually the round patties I'm gonna wrap them in um, my stretch type and that will keep them fresh 
for a very long time. So I, I think I mentioned a while ago about um, if you see them in the store and they're a real dark looking dull color, um, most of the time, it can be for two reasons. Most of the time, it's going to be because they're old and they've been in the store a very long time. And the second reason it could be is either they didn't put food coloring in it or they didn't put much. I'm not left-handed. It's because of the way the camera does. It makes it look like it mirrors. It makes it look the opposite. Um, on the peanut brittle, I don't use a uh, candy thermometer. I've made it for decades and I've made just literally, I, I would say millions, but y'all probably wouldn't believe me, but I have made, I have made hundreds of thousands of bags of peanut brittle, and I don't need a, I don't need a candy thermometer for that, but um, if you're making divinity, or if you're making peanut patties, you definitely want a candy thermometer. Okay, so that hadn't quite started boiling yet. Turn that up just a pinch. You can tell this is getting thicker. This has been setting. It smells really, really good. This has been setting for about, oh, I don't know, maybe 12, 13 minutes. And it's still got about eight minutes to go. Once it starts really setting, it's going to, um, it'll start getting really hard to stir. So I'm kind of going back and forth between these two pots here. So I hope y'all can see. Um, is a can candy thermometer the same as a hot oil thermometer? Um, you can use the, uh, if you're talking about a digital, you can use that. Um, and I do, um, I think I showed y'all this the other day. I do use this one and Pamper Chef has one I use. But uh, for making candy, um, I really prefer the old bulb type. That's what I prefer. And uh, these are kind of hard to find. Actually, you might can get them this time of year, but um, Bed Bath and Beyond has them, or they normally have them. And I'm gonna go ahead and stick this on here. Used to could get them at Walmart or the dollar store. And you may could get them now. Um, I know at one time, I don't know, a year or so ago when we were looking for one because mine broke, um, we went to every store in town. Nobody had them. Literally, dollar stores, um, Walmart, grocery stores, we could not find one. Finally, we went in this um, one store and they said, go to Beth, Beth, Bed Bath & Beyond in Longview. And, and they had them. And that's where I got it. So... I bought a couple so I would have um, have a spare if something happened to the one I have. Okay, so we got, this is boiling real good here, so I'm going to make sure I watch the thermometer between stirring that and the thermometer. That butter and vanilla smells so good in this candy. It really smells good. And this is kind of like the peanut brittle. You have to know exactly when to pour it up because if you don't, it'll be stuck in the pan and you won't be able to get it out unless you reheat it. You can see how much thicker that's getting. And this is really good to give as a gift, too. Um, it's, it seems like, I don't know, um, men, and y'all may not, the men in your family may not be like the men in our family, but the men in our family love nuts. They love peanuts. And so something like this is something that men really like to have. It would be a great gift for someone to um, uh, to have for Christmas. You know, you don't always have to go to the store to buy a gift. You can make gifts too, which are really, can be really delicious. Okay, we're getting about 2.46, so we've got a little ways to go for um, that one's ready to come off.
So you can get real inexpensive trays at, like we have a little store in Marshall that's kind of like a cake supply store. And you can get some cute little trays to put, like if you want to put an assortment of um, cookies and candy and take it to somebody. Or you can make your own. Just get a, you can get a, a pretty little plain, maybe not even pretty, but just a plain box and fill it with candy and cookies and um, and then um, put a pretty ribbon or bow on it. Would be really pretty. Okay, we're almost ready to take this up here. Okay, we got we're up to two fifty. So y'all see how how quick this comes to two hundred and fifty degrees. It comes really quick. Okay. I'm gonna put my butter in there and I'm gonna stir it until it melts. And I turn my burner off. I actually need to set them off the burner. And then I got my vanilla. And try to get all of that vanilla. Just make sure when you put that in there. Um, I wouldn't melt the butter. I would put it in there soft, but make sure that it's not straight out of the refrigerator because it's going to take it longer to, to uh, melt and it's going to cool down the candy really fast. So make sure that your butter is soft. Okay. Now I'm going to put in my red food coloring, and that's one teaspoon. Got my burners off, and then I'm going to just stir this real good. And I'm going to set this uh, back on the back burner. So we were talking about fruitcake just a minute ago, and we've had several people ask us if we did fruitcakes. And I know that Mary does an unbaked fruitcake. I believe she did one last year. And uh, get my candy stirred again. See how thick it's getting? Um, but as far as an old-fashioned fruitcake, now our grand grandmother, great-grandmother made them. But I'm not a fan of actual fruitcake. Now, I will eat it. It's not that I won't eat it. But I'm not a big enough fan that I want to make one. <laughs> now, that might sound horrible. But I'll tell y'all what I make. I didn't make one last year. But I plan to make one this year. And that is an orange slice cake. And I'm sure that some of y'all have heard of that. It is a recipe that Mike got in probably 1980, somewhere around there. Um, and when he brought the recipe home to me, I made it that night. And I've made one almost every year. Now, I did miss last year, but I've made one almost every year since then. They are the most delicious cakes. They're, uh, they're very rich. They have uh, orange, slice, orange slices and... It's a, it's a lot of work that you put into this cake, but it is so worth it. Um, I cut the orange slices in very, very, very tiny pieces. Mama didn't, bless her heart. She would just, however it come out, she would just cut the pieces in chunks and put it, and, and hers was good. But I cut mine in little tiny pieces. It has, um, it has uh, chopped dates in it. It has coconut and pecans. And it is just, it, it, the cake is just divine. I mean, and you talk about a, a present to give someone for a gift at Christmas. This is something that um, uh, I give someone that I know is going to like this cake and that's going to eat every crumb of it. It's that good. It takes so much time to make it and you don't want to. You don't want to waste it giving it to somebody that's not going to eat it. <laughs> okay, let me set my timer again for the other one. And I'm not going to I'm not going to keep y'all on the whole time for that other one to get ready, but I am going to keep y'all on long enough to pour this up. And we're almost 
to the point. And for those of you keeping time, it has been over 20 minutes, and I know that. And sometimes I'll go like 22 or 23 minutes before I pour it up. But, but you can see how thick this is. It's still got a little bit of shine to it. So I'm going to just stir it a little bit more until I get it to where I want it to be. And then I'll pour it up. Now, if for some reason yours doesn't set, the main reason, if, if it doesn't set, you haven't cooked it long enough or you haven't stirred it long enough. And if you've cooked it long enough and you've stirred it long enough and it still doesn't set, it could be, number one, the weather. Number two, it could be... Um, uh, well, I honestly, I can't think of any other reasons that other than the three. The weather, you haven't cooked it long enough or you haven't stirred it long enough. But if it does not set in your pans, you can recook it. You can put, take it out of your pans and recook it. You need to bring it back up to the 250 again and then uh, go through the stirring process and, and put it back in your pans. But if you follow the recipe... Um, it should set for you, and you're cooking this on a, on a nice day. Okay. See this right here? It's really, really getting thick. Now, this recipe, depending on how much you put in your little pans, you're probably going to get about six pans out of this. It doesn't make a lot. And if you want to use a bigger boiler and you want to put, you know, you want to double your recipe, I'm going to tell you that you can do it. But um, if you do, it's going to take longer to stir it. It's going to take longer to cook it. And um, if you're new at candy making, again, I don't recommend it. This actually here is a double batch, uh, which it doesn't look like it, but it is a double batch. So... Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise you to, to double this because then you're, you're talking about a quadruple batch. Okay. You can tell right there that this is really, really thick. I'm going to go ahead and go over there and put this in my pans. I'm going to move the, move the camera. So hopefully, whoops, hopefully y'all can see it. And I really need to. Stir this here just a minute before I start pouring this up. I'm going to do it from this side because when I poured the peanut brittle up the other day, I don't think y'all could actually even see it. I don't think y'all could even see me doing it. So I'm going to do it from this side after I get this lid on the sugar. Okay, so you can tell this is very thick. I may have to get me a spoon to get this out with. I'm not going to put a whole lot in the pans. It'll spread out. This is kind of awkward how I'm doing this, but... Actually, I am going to put a little bit more in here because I want it to... I want the whole bottom to be covered because that's what makes it pretty. I've got parchment under this tray here, so if, you, if you're if you using a baking tray, you can put foil, paper towel, or newspaper, or whatever you want to put under it. This boiler is hot. I'm going to put a little bit more in that one in a second. I weigh these when I used to, when I was selling them, I weighed it because I wanted to make sure that, you know, they were getting their money's worth because I wanted each patty to be about the same size. Now those you get in a store, I honestly don't know how many ounces they are. But um, they're put a little bit more in this one. This is already sitting in the pan. 
but I've always tried to, like I said, give a fair amount. Now, if you're charging by the pound, it's very important to weigh it anyway. But um, normally when I sold these, I sold them by the patty, just like a, you know, a certain price per patty. here and get this a little closer now when you get through with your pan don't run it in water because you're going to want to spoon out the rest of this and it makes a really good snack and if you're using a pan like this you could i mean a spoon to do what i'm doing you could have actually so this definitely made more than six. I said it would make six, but it's made three, six, it's made, it made nine. So probably because I didn't put quite as much in these as I used to when I was selling this. I usually try to get six out of a batch. Now when this sets, it's just going to be real sugary, and and I would tell you it melts in your mouth. It doesn't because it's got peanuts in it, but the candy part will, but the peanuts, of course, you have to chew them. There's still some in there, but um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to add it on top of, um, on top of any, I'll just, I'll just eat that in a little bit. And I will tell you that if you, and I need to go back over there and stir my stuff again. If you put more on here, try to get what you want in the, on there first. Because if you put more on here, it's going to pile up in like a, a little clump. And it looks like a cow patty. So try to keep what you're putting in there, try to put it in there to start with. So it'll be nice and smooth. And it won't, and it'll look a lot prettier. So I'm going to get back over here. And stir this a couple more times and then um, see if there's any questions that I can see that anybody's asked about this. Um, and then I will, I will let y'all go and do something else with your morning. Um, okay, let's see. Pull them to you so we can see them. All right, let me get a couple here and put right in front here. These will probably be set enough I can actually take them out of the pan in a minute. But I usually let them set until they get completely cool. And that way, uh, they don't lose their shape. Because you want them to be really pretty. Um, regular peanuts. Um, these are raw shell peanuts. And I just placed an order yesterday. Because I've got one bag of these left. I usually order once a year and I keep them in my freezer. I put them out into into the Ziploc bags, and that way I don't have to take out a whole bunch at once. I've just got a bag. Um, so these are raw shell peanuts. Um, I ordered from Nutstock. They're not a paid advertiser, but so many of y'all ask us, you know, where we get the stuff, and that's where I get them from. Um, okay, let's see if anybody else has asked anything else. So if you like peanuts or if you have someone in your family that likes peanuts if you have uh, people that are allergic by all means don't make them but if you have people in your family that make them this is a really good thing to make and you can make ahead of time if you're wanting the recipe um if for our members you can print our recipe on our membership page um if you just want to get the recipe from watching the video then that's that's where you need to get it we give the ingredients we give the measurements but we do not come back and respond to each individual comment when you ask could i have the recipe or this or that i believe that i covered everything that i put in it i tried to i think i did um so uh watch our video uh share our video and share our page um we appreciate it so very much and um, we hope that y'all all have a beautiful um, holiday season. This is something that's starting out um, the time of year that we absolutely love. It's just a, 
you know, we have so many happy memories of growing up as a child and um, uh, living next door, our Pinky Mom, Pinky Paul, and running back and forth, especially around the holidays and see what they're doing, see what we're doing. And, and Mama is, uh, you know, Mama was always cooking, baking something. To become a member, uh, you have to go to PinkyMouseKitchen.com, www.PinkyMouseKitchen.com. We do charge a small uh, monthly fee plus tax. It's $5.99 plus tax if you want the recipe to be able to print it. That's what that's for. So um, if you don't and you just want to get the recipe, then please watch our video. And uh, thank you very much for telling me I do good instruction. Sometimes I feel, you know, when you when you don't have your sister here and you're not talking back and forth, it's kind of like you're talking to, you know, yourself, you know, which um, I, you know, it's, it's not as easy as it looks. I can tell you that right now. And Mary will tell you the same thing. Uh, the peanuts do not have the shell in them. They need to be raw shelled peanuts like these. You can buy this and buy them in pound packages in the store. They're usually around the produce section um, or maybe in the bacon aisle with the nuts. But a lot of times they have them around the produce section. Now, if y'all notice, these are pretty big peanuts. Sometimes the one you get in the store, they're small. They're really small peanuts. And it doesn't seem like there's that many peanuts in there because they are so small. I like the big ones. So, um... Thank you again for uh, watching, and they're called Redskins. Um, some of them are lighter than others. These aren't real red. I have got them that are really red. I really don't like the dark, really dark Redskins. I prefer the ones that are about, these are kind of like medium, but as far as the taste, it's not going to change the taste. So whatever you can find in your area, or if you order off of Amazon or Nutstop or wherever you go to order them at, um, just key in raw shell peanuts. You don't want them cooked and you don't want them salted. They need to be raw shelled. So thanks again for watching. I love y'all. I'll get this other batch poured up and I'll take a picture and post them. Um, well, let me, let me just check and see if I can take this out yet. Okay. See, it just popped right out. See, there's your peanut patty. Now, I'm going to put it back in the pan because I want it to cool so it doesn't change the shape. But you just push your thumb on the bottom and they just pop right out. So, um, and they're really, really pretty when they're wrapped. So, thank you again for watching. I love y'all. Um, uh, I will, if nothing happens, I'll be on tomorrow. Um, hopefully, the weather won't start until after we get through or I get through. Mary's not going to get out because of the weather. We're expecting bad weather, but I will be cooking tomorrow, and then um, we'll be back together on Wednesday at her house, Lord willing, and the weather is not bad. Um, most of y'all know that we're 55 miles apart, and um, so we we just make it work, you know, the best we can, and we'd much rather be cooking together, but sometimes we have to do it this way, um, when, especially when we're, you know, like, we're trying to get as many recipes as we can in. So I'll see y'all later. Be sure to count your blessings. And thank you again for watching. And thank you for loving and supporting Mary and I. It means so very much to us. So God bless. And uh, I hope y'all will get in the kitchen and make some peanut patties. Bye-bye.